We're back talking all things political with Basil Smeichel and O'Brien Murray. So, Lee Zeldin, he's starting a political pack. The question is, is there a way for him and his, his pack to make inroads in minority communities or with younger voters? Yeah, I, I actually I think he there is some there is some wiggle room here. If you look at some of the polling after uh, 2020, you see that Latinos and Asian Americans in New York are actually um, voted for Donald Trump uh, in higher numbers than they did previously. That says a lot. Not to mention the fact that Asian Americans are concerned that a lot of the leader the democratic leadership was not addressing the uh the hate crimes in their community with the the, the level of urgency that they felt so there is a little open you've got you got asians american and you've got the uh latinos you got mexican you got dominican you got puerto rican you got other you put them all together and it is a significant block that will vote republican and he can do that across the country uh and it's not just New York, it's across the country we're talking about. But here's the, here's the more local question. If he's going to go into these city council races mm -hmm. and try to turn some seats and flip some seats to the Republican column, will he be able to do it? Very hard to do on a city council level. If we're talking um, in some of the uh, state legislative seats, particularly state senate, in areas like Long Island where Democrats did not do very well, and some, some places upstate, then I think there's a little more wiggle room. What about in the Bronx and in, in Brooklyn? There's some talk that there's some seats that could go Republican. So and with Latino vote, too, it's different in Bronx than it is in Brooklyn when you break those two counties up. At the same time, you've got what Curtis Lee did for the mayor's race. You, there's, there's a template right there to know where you're going to get Republican votes and where you're going to get independents voting Republican. The other, it, an important point is that you have African Americans leaving the city at very large numbers. So what that does is it really does change that sort of that old school Democratic coalition. It doesn't exist in the same way that it used to. So that's, that's going to be a problem. Even if Republicans don't take advantage of it, it's still a problem for Democrats to be able to sort of reshape but that. Even, within, even with the black vote, you've got the African American and the Caribbean. It's a very different vote, and the Caribbean vote will go Republican. The African American won't. Hard to say. I, I, Long only because I'm Caribbean, Elmont. so I can yeah, say no, that. But, uh, it, it, but, I, but I hear you. It's a different vote. It's Nassau not a County is a perfect vote. example of it. If you look, a, look in those districts along the border of Queens mm -hmm. and what they're doing, they vote Republican compared to the districts that are African American. But so will Zeldin be able to do for the country elect more Republican congressmen what he did for Long Island? Or New York. Absolutely. I mean, he's got a great track record he did here. If he can raise the money and deliver the message that he has to do to the donors and then have results, he can do that. Better. Yeah, it's it, he, he can, but the country's in a place right now they're looking for something closer to normalcy, which is why Joe Biden did well and why we Democrats did well in the midterms. The way he sounded on your show, I think, is a way that he could he could carry that message across the country. The question is, what does he do with the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Boberts? You know, how does he handle that? Those are the folks that seem to be bringing the Republican Party down. How does he how does he get them out of the he, way to move forward? He, he will find the lane to stay in, and he'll and that's where he's going to get results. He's not going to go to every race. He'll figure out where he can make a difference. It'll be on the margins, but he's got to t figure out what he's going to raise, put the budget, and have an impact. Impacts will raise more money. So what does it do to the future of Lee Zeldin, who's 43 and has definitely has more runway in terms of a political life? I think it's crazy to do what we're doing. I mean, most <laughs> most members, former members, will go to a think tank that's already yeah. there to go to some pack. Does he run there. against Kirsten Gillibrand? Oh, I don't. I, there might be an opening there, but I don't think he ends, he ends up doing that. I don't know if the the ground is there for him right now. But he's young. He can do. He's got a big future if the, he wants it. The, the model for that would be if he wasn't going in New York State. If he was going only in New York State, much like they did in Florida, like uh, other people that run for office, they use a think tank of sorts. They get their message out, and then they they Does run. Does he run for governor again? I think he can. I think he can. But uh, the question I have is, like, a George Pataki couldn't win a governor's race today because I don't think he could get through a Republican primary. The question is, is the Republican Party going to change so much so that Lee Zeldin doesn't change enough with it to be able to run, get through a primary and win? And hopefully, Kathy Hochul has learned a lesson from this race to sort of change her, her, her message a little bit. And the, the upstate voters have left, much like you're talking about yeah. in New York City, what's going on with the black voters. That whole voting block is lesser than it was with George Pataki. And then when you go to Long Island, same, th same thing's happening. And also have in independents ahead. are now the second biggest voting block in New York I State. I know. Um, under Democrats and more so than Republicans. Do, they, so. do, do the Republicans lean Republican or do they, I mean, do the independents lean Republican or Democrat? There's, I think right now they're leaning more Democratic because that was the pattern throughout the country in 2022. But again, if you have a more moderate Republican, there is a huge opening there. I don't think it's sort of a Trump-linked Republican. And that brings the challenge down to the general elections in the city council. 
if you're registered for a party, Republican or Democrat, you will go vote. That's what you're going to do. If you're independent, you're less likely to vote in those. So if you look at what happened in Chicago in the mayor's race, the Latino vote didn't show up as much. It was Mexican Americans. They did not show up as much because they didn't see their candidate winning. They stayed home. There was about a 22 percent. Uh, percent of the vote could have been Latino, and they didn't even break 20. So Kathy Hochul lost her bid to get her own candidate elected to the uh, State Court of Appeals. She lost because progressives amassed to hurt them, to hurt uh, Hector Lasell. So my question to you is this, does this affect her ability to get a budget deal with the same progressives who are now feeling empowered by the fact that they were able to defeat her candidate? Mm. Well, I think the Senate was empowered. It's not just the progressives. There's always this sort of back and forth between the Senate and the governor. This was a, this was the Senate saying, but you know, showing their power. But there are also progressives in the assembly. That's, that's true. But I, but to be honest with you, I think a lot of that progressive sort of that is that gets lost in the mm -hmm. fact that this was the Senate showing its power. And I and I think that she is going to have to find a way to work with the Senate going forward, progressive or moderate. It was it is it is led by a moderate. It, it, I'm sorry. The moderate? Think, a renegade. She is. No, no. Well, a no, renegade. No, no. Gen the gen Generis oh, is the guy with the money raising. Generis, I'm what focused he did. On, no, no. I'm focused on Generis. I'm for two weeks in a row. I, 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 you brought up, I'm I was avoiding it. But Michael Generis is a renegade. He did it for the lieutenant governor, for, the, for this governor. He's the one that led the fight against mm -hmm. the Latinos and against this judicial nominee. I'm not debating. I'm time. not debating his role. What I am saying, though, in the, in response to the question of the budget battle, that this is a this is an issue for Andrea Stewart Cousins and her leadership of of the New York State Senate. Moderate or progressive, she is in charge, and she has shown that she's willing to use she, her power. Look at the fact that she wound up calling for the floor vote. Uh, right. When a lot of people didn't think that that vote was ever going to get called, and she did it, lost, done, book closed. So to I, me, her exercise of power is really what is really what's on display she, here. Debra, uh, progressive, oh, moderate. She, she, she's a leader. No, I said that last week too. But Generis is the renegade, and he did it with the judicial. He did it with redistricting, and he's doing it now with judicial because what's happening now in the courts, he's trying to undo his mistakes with redistricting and have that oh, case man, a, go up there. He wants one single person at the top that mm -hmm. he wants to make a decision. To you're fix giving, his mistake. You're giving him a lot of power. Not of power. It's the mistakes he's made, oh. and he's getting caught. Oh. So we have about 45 seconds <laughs> left. I wonder if you think that there's the budget deal, that a deal on the budget will be done in time, or we're going to go past the. Uh, April 1st deadline. I, I think I think it'll get done in time. It has to get done in time simply because um, this is the, this is really her first big one, and she there was a there was a lot invested in making it. And sure with it one party control, time. it has to be on time. You can't point to the other party and blame one of the houses. It is one party in control up there. It will be on time. Plus, the mayor is going to be mayor is going to have a lot to say about one and make sure that it gets done on time. Yeah, but the other side of the coin is, well, the mayor. We have like really 20 seconds yeah. left. Will the mayor get what he wants? I don't think he's going to get everything that he wants, um, so he'll have to start making some more trips up oh, to Albany. Nobody ever gets what they want. Think about Christmas, Hanukkah, any of those things. You don't get what you want. You get a little bit. Okay. Kwanzaa, I get what I want. Kwanzaa, there you go. <laughs> I get what I want. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there for now. Thank you both for joining me.